What I'm saying is you have to come to Drupal with a design. In other words, you, uh, what are your business objects? What are your, um, what are your, what, what's the scope? What is, what is the uh, interaction that the different users are going to have with the system? That all has to be defined, and you have to have a candidate architecture. We won't delve into that right now um, because we don't want to use the time for that. But that is very important. You, you know, you have to have a whole development uh, underway without you. Okay, and then. You, you implement the business objects using the content construction kit. Again, some people say real programmers write, they implement their business objects by writing modules, node modules. And that, that may have been true in, in Drupal 4.6 or whatever. But once again, you're protecting yourself uh, against changes in the Drupal architecture. Uh, I love Drupal. I adore Drupal, but I do not want to marry Drupal. <laughs> I want to be able to port a website of doing Drupal to some other system. And that may sound horrifying, you know, uh, heretic, but if I know I can do that, then I know it's the best possible design in Drupal too. Right? Um, so I, I use CCK because the content construction kit allows me to use... Uh, 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 and, and what I can tell you is that any, anything you develop in CCK in Drupal 5, and you, you then upgraded your site to Drupal 6, all of those content types get upgraded to Drupal 6. Um, there's a difficulty in, I, I think there's no way that you can actually export Drupal 5 and import into Drupal 6, unfortunately. But if you take your old Drupal 5 site with your content types, and you upgrade that site to Drupal 6, your content types will be upgraded. Now, Views is, is wonderful. Views actually has a facility for upgrading your old uh, views from Drupal 5 to Drupal 6. So you're, you're doubly protected there. With Views 2, uh, we're going to uh, uh, implement then the, the, the listing of content types that we uh, enter into the system based on the implementation of, of them in CCK. Now, the first thing you have to know about views 2 is the advanced help. We have to know about embedding views, and we're interested in packaging views. Okay, that's a general idea that we want to go through. Um, we're going to use an application uh, called the Translation Studio, um, basically, to start off. Um, it's a multi-user, multilingual translation studio capable of being used by translators looking for work and clients who need to get their translations done. The clients upload the work, the translator team leader assigns the work to register translators, and the translators log in and create bilingual or multilingual versions of the same document. When the work's ready, the client is notified and logs in to access and download his or her translation. Um, views here does all the groundwork for this. So the first thing you're going to do in any project you have is you're going to design your business objects. Now here we have just a basic um, sort of a domain model, UML model, or even Basically, th this means uh, uh, this means inheritance, and, and this means aggregation. But it's not important, you know. I mean, the main thing is you, you, you get a clear idea that you're going to have um, clients' applications and translate applications, and you're going to have uh, content translations and an actual an actual business object called translation. You're going to have users with their profile. You're going to have a, a list of translations based on views. You may have some action and triggers. So you have a pretty good idea of what architecture you're going to use in Drupal. Okay? So, taking care of business. Jane Doe, who is a client, logs in and enters three articles in Spanish from La Opinion newspaper that needs translating into English. Jane lists all her translations. Uh, and use the status and then logs out. Okay? So basically, 
we'll, we'll log out to the team leader and we'll log in. Here's the basic uh, welcome page. It's a bilingual uh, site, but, uh, but this is not being translated yet. If you go to your account here, then uh, Jane Doe will log in. And uh, Jane Doe has a dashboard here, which we'll get into later. But um, she can click here and view translations. She can view translations in English, and she can view translations in Spanish. And she has actually entered. By clicking on new translation, she has uh, entered. Let's just do it now, taking advantage of the, the wonderful thing <coughs> we have internet. Let's go to La Union again, newspaper, and let's say uh, cartas, las nuevas viviendas de Estados Unidos, which means tents, the new housing for the, in the United States. <laughs> so uh, here's the title, and um, basically Jane Doe, is, she needs somebody to translate this, so she puts that in. She says that it's um, Spanish. Um, she wants it due on today. Today, what do you mean? She wants it due today, and she's just gonna. We'll just put the first paragraph. In this. Okay, and then and that's it. And she, since she's in Spanish, the whole interface. Um, since I'm on my laptop here and not on the internet. Um, the, there's a trigger which sends a mail to the team leader when anybody enters a new translation, and that it's not possible because I'm on my laptop, so it gives the error message. But if, if Jane now lists her her her, um, her different translations, uh, she can see she can see here she forgot to put in uh, the due date for these, so I guess she better she better edit that one, and she better give it a due date of the, the 15th. But she needs all this stuff done today. And um, so, okay, the view for this translate, to view the translation is a very simple view. Uh, we'll look at it now and see what we have. Um, In this browser, I'm logged in as, as a, a development person with all the permissions, and we can actually take a look at the views. As I said before, the view that we're using is called translations. So I look here, and I, I, here's the view translations that's being used. Let's edit it. Now, when you install Views 2, you must install the Advanced Help. Because the Advanced Help is, we're not used to it, but it's the best possible, uh, uh, um, it's the best possible um, documentation uh, that even goes into really advanced uh, stuff. So, um, you just can go to the Views uh, Help Index, and it has, you know, the getting started explains the whole uh, the whole interface. You know, it's just incredible. So most people don't know that this is even here, and it's also in every new version of Views they add more stuff in it. So they've really been working on it, and um, it's just a beautiful job. I think it's uh, and it will explain the whole user interface, um, um, and then it gives. Three examples, to create a page, to create a block of recent stories, and an RSS feed, okay? So, um, it really behooves you to install uh, advanced help um, together with views and to get the benefit of this. And not only for, um, not only for that, if you look up, uh, if you, there's an advanced help 
menu, and you have for everything, you have for DEPI, for node reference, for number, all kinds of stuff. You can also use this module to write your own context-sensitive help. Uh, in my book on chapter 14, I explain, in, it's a five-page uh, process of how to use advanced help for your own application. Um, so what we're interested here is in actually we're interested in seeing the um, Now, before we look at it, what's it going to do? It's going to say, list nodes of this kind, right? Show me these fields of, the, of, the, of each node and, and style it in such and such a way. That's what it is. And um, what's beautiful is, you go in there to edit, and can you see? You go in there to edit, and in the default view, you have a default view always. And basically, it's saying, here's the fields we want. Um, here are the filters we're putting on it. Uh, and this is the, the uh, SQL statement that's generated in the query. Um, see, you can even use views. And let's suppose that you have a really high traffic site and you, you, you really need to optimize this more than views. You can even use views as a, as a generator to, to have a starting point and then optimize the, the SQL by hand if you want to. It's, it's really incredible. So you, uh, you define uh, the fields, you, you, you put the fields. Does everybody here un understand the fields and the filters part? Have you ever made a view? Who here has not made a view? with a filter. Everybody understands it. So we don't have to, to go into that, right? Uh, if you'd like, we can spend five minutes and, and explain it. Is, that, is it clear? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's just do really quickly. Um, if I was going to make a, a view from scratch, I'm just going to create a new view. Okay? I'm going to say, um, um, Translations to, okay? I'm going to say uh, translations to, and I'm going to put no tag on it. Um, the first thing when you're creating, you can actually, with views to, you can have user views, file views, all kinds of different views. Um, previously, only nodes were, um, and uh, Eaton spoke about this in Drupal Con just now. In, in views one, only nodes could be listed. So everybody does a whole movement to change everything into a node, to change comments into a node, to change users into a node. There's a module user node, mm -hmm. uh, which is unnecessary now. First of all, because you have user reference, and second of all, because you can actually make a user view. So that if you want to create lists of users, you know, who have recently joined the site, you can do that, for example. So we're interested in nodes here. Okay, we're going to make the node. We've got the node. The first thing we're going to do is what? We're going to say what type we want. Right? Because if I, what happens if I do preview now? It says defaults uses fields. So if I add a, a field which is simply the name of the node, and I say just, just uh, the title. Just give me the title. That's all I want. Okay. So basically, it's just going to list every node in the system, whether it's a translation or whatever it is. So what do I need to do now? What do I need to do? I want to add a filter. Okay. So I'm going to add a filter and say I want a node, a node filter. Here it comes. I know. <laughs> a node filter. Notice I have no translation, no revision, and no node. And filter, and what do I want to put here? Type. So I want a translation. So now at least I just have translations. So 
But what's the purpose of this? The purpose is that Jane Doe comes in and wants to see the translation she has created. So I need to put another filter on of type user. I need the current user. User current. So this item is currently not exposed. Great. Is the login user yes or no? Is the login user? It's terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, is the log it's Spanish. <laughs> is the log no, is the user logged in? Is the log in user? Okay. You understand. And suddenly I have no translations. It doesn't work. <coughs> the view's not working. Oh yes, it is working because I I dev don't have any translations. Wow. Okay, basically, so so far so good, right? Um that uh, you know that you can, uh, um, uh, you know, you can just stick this on a menu and all kinds of stuff. Now, in the old views one, we used to have a page view and a block view, right? Remember that? Now you can have as many page views, as many block views, whatever you want. Okay. So um, what you do here is you can come here. You can say attachment, block, date browser, feed, and page. Okay. So um, let's, let's first of all do a page view, and I have to just give it a path. So I'll say uh, trans2 is the path, and I may as well, um, I can stick it on the menu if I want. For example, I can make a nice little block visible only for clients, and make a little client admin menu. So it says client menu and, and put put this on and, and put a title, view your translation. So instead of putting it on the primary menu, I can just make a little block to the side. This is a great idea for um, uh, avoiding the mess that sometimes the Drupal navigation menu is. So for each, you know, when you make a block, you can go in and say it's only visible to, for a certain role. So you can have a special block that's admin just for your client, right? And so you're, you, can, you can put views in it. You don't even have to visit the menu page, you can do it right here, or you can make tabs. So that's a very, very useful uh, aspect. Um, good. You probably want to sort it by, by date and, and stuff like that. So basically, just wanted to make sure we're all clear on, 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 on a basic view. And we save the view, okay? Yes, we have. So, going back to, to, to basically what we're doing here, Jane Doe um, being logged in here um, can view her translations and the status doesn't say anything. So she logs out, right? And then she comes back. She comes in every every half an hour to see if her translations are ready, right? So she logs out, comes back in again, no status. Logs out, comes back, and you know. And after a while, um, uh, Jane is getting pretty sick and tired of logging in all the time to see if her translations are done. So an RSS feed would be would be much better. And the RSS feed is really cool because. What's going on with the RSS feed is, if we look at the view, you do two things. You, you create a display this RSS and you connect it, you attach it to the page. So um, if we look at the view that Jane is using, um, we have a page view, which is what, what uh, is on the primary menu. And we have a feed menu, a feed display, I'm sorry. We have a feed display. Um, and the, the interesting thing, we can have several feed displays with different criteria. You can have several page uh, displays with different criteria, right? Um, because you can use the default, when you make a page uh, display, 
right? Um, for example, I can add another pasty display if I want. And the second one, I'm going to call um, something different. We can, we can call this, um, let's suppose we want to see finished. Finished translation. And then all I do um, is I make another path for it. Can say um, view translations finished, and by default, what I have here, what do I have here? I have all the same filters, the same fields that that the default has. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say I want to add a filter here that the status is finished. So I. Um, I, uh, I know that the, each translation content type has a status field, uh, which I have included uh, in the design of the content type. I need to look at this carefully. I would like to bring up while you're on this screen that uh, for those that don't have naming conventions for your CCK fields, like lock down, it really helps to just come up with a convention Mostly stick to it, and uh, you know, be descriptive in the text of the fields. I mean, you know, you're gonna want to hunt for a lot of fields sometimes. Let's illustrate what Chris is saying here. Um, if we go to the content types and we look at the translation implemented business object in the manage fields part, notice that um, client. Field translation client, field translation translator, field translation status, field translation they do. Any, any, any custom field that we're adding on here, this is a pure convention that I use, that in Drupal 7 may be a different story. But right now, uh, right now we do it this way. Um, because in Drupal 7, um, we're going to have the new field API. Um, which is going to allow us to, to, to concentrate on little bundles of fields, which is a more advanced, it's almost, uh, it approximates object-oriented uh, uh, design more. Uh, but right now we're stuck with this, so <laughs> we're, we're stuck with this for a year and a half. So we better get used to it. And if you don't do this, as Chris is saying, if you don't put a little prefix on here, when it comes time to work with a view, and you start looking at the status here, let's get rid of both of these. Remove this. Remove this. Okay, I'm going to save the view as it was before. I'm going to show you the difficulty I had just now. Um, we want to just see the ones that are completed, so I said. Um, I want um, content and there's two statuses. One says content status, field translation status, allow values. And the other one is just the status. This is if I want, this is what I put in first. That the allow values is what's going to take the same allow values. Going back to the content types for one second. Um, the um, status. In the status, the allowed values are these. Okay? They are. Uh, new, assigned, completed, needs work, ready. So, um, I, want, I want that to appear, so I have to choose the allowed values. That's what I want to bring into my view. So I click on add here, and is one of completed. Because this view is the view where, where Jane Doe can see which, which ones are actually completed. So, um, I'm going to update, and um, 
Mm. Okay, I've just made a big mistake. A terrible mistake. The mistake I've made is I've been editing the default display the whole time. Which means I've changed all the displays to this. So uh, I need to, one second. Is everybody here familiar with displays? Has anybody not made uh, more than one display before? Okay. So, stupid. It, so that's a mistake we're going to make. I do that. Yes. Good. And that's because in its current incarnation, the views UI jumps back to defaults at certain points, yeah. such as a completion of an update. Exactly. So here, the way it is, it's got the type, the language, and the uh, the the current user. And on the other page, it's the same thing, but it has a page with a path and everything else. So. Um, finished translations is what we were working with, and it's here where I want to add in finished translations and only finished translations is where I want to add that extra filter. So, again, content, allowed values of, of this, win, okay, and Only completed. And here, if I do this, if I click here, what's it going to do? It's going to add this to all the displays. We don't want that. We want this here, override. Because I want to override the default. And, and again, this is akin to an object oriented approach to, to, to program. Because what I'm doing, I'm saying, I'm copying all of the behavior of the default and I'm, I'm overriding it. And I'm saying only only for this guy. Okay? And then I update this guy. And just to be sure, if I click on page, I don't have that filter here. But if I click on finish translations, I do. Okay? It, it's even got an analyze thing here. It says Display defaults has no access control but does not contain a filter for published nodes. Display finished translations has no access control but does not contain a filter for published nodes. So Earl Miles is telling us, you guys forgot to put a published nodes thing in the filter because if, if you're not going to put administration privileges on, you don't want just any user seeing nodes which are not published. So it's best practices to add, we're going to add a filter where the node has to be published. Boom. No published. Publish yes, and this time um, it says use default, and it says update. So uh, I'm going to click on, on, on use default, and now I want to see if it changes in default. It, it didn't. Why didn't it do that? Okay. So I need to put it into default. It's weird that the button, I, I would have expected <laughs> to have the opportunity to update the. Right. But because you were editing a display and not defaults, yeah. you were simply saying, don't do something custom here. You weren't saying, save this as a default. But there was no option to save it as a default. There was update. Maybe that was enough. Update would have created an overridden filter. Yeah, exactly. But clicking use default reverts to whatever the defaults were. Which yeah, but, at this but, point but it does saved not get included. But look, it saved it. Oh, publish equals no, I see. Very good. So let's do this again. And actually. Where did it go? 
Well, let's go to, to D4. And let's, I click on the D4 display, I add node, published, add it in. Okay. And this time, I'm going to, oops, forgot to say, forgot to say yes. So now page has a feed has a and, and, and this has it too. They all have it. Okay, great. So we're gonna save save the view. Good. So we didn't come here to that, we came here to explain about the feed. Because Jane Doe is sick and tired of always logging in. So the feed, you put the path in. So we say <coughs> view translations rss.xml. So this is cool. I mean, you can put <coughs> anything you want. If you just want to put it. <coughs> view translations slash feed, or you can put view translations slash rss.xml, or whatever it is you want to put. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now, the other, the other thing here, is that we want to attach it somewhere because uh, you know where are we going to put it? Where's it going to? Where's Where's Jane Doe going to see the icon? So, to which display would you like to attach it? To all of them? No, um, certainly not to defaults. But finished transitions would be cool because this is a dynamic feed. In other words, it's going to have the feed is going to have. Um, uh, is the, the feed is going to be constructed according to the, the actual uh, logic of, of the display, which are not the same. So we're going to need those two. Hit update. And then, um, let's take a look and see. Uh, no, not there. Here. So if, if Jane says view translations, here she has a feed. I click on that, it actually, it has the feed. Now, one interesting thing is that it's, it's, it's Spanish feed. So she can have, she can subscribe in her Google Reader to a Spanish feed and to, a, and to an English feed. Since she often uploads stuff to be translated from Spanish to English, she wants a Spanish feed. So she can just say, okay, Subscribe now. Put that to my add that to my Google. Reader. Okay, so that's a pretty powerful thing. Any questions up up to now? Is this clear? Okay. okay. So now, um, you know, we answer this question because a lot of, a lot of people clone views for the slightest change, and now we don't have to do that. We don't have to make twenty views for, for different. You have the same view, and each display overrides the criteria it wants. Is that clear? In other words, what we did just now is we made one view of a page of, of all of the translations. Then we made another view, which were finished ones. So let's let's make a nice little block for, as I said before, let's do that. Let's use those two views. Okay. So if I go uh, in as admin and um, again, um, it's not a block view, it's a block with a little menu, right? So, what do I want to do? Um, let me see, how can I do that? Um, I will um, actually create a little menu. So, I go into menus, and I say, I want to create a new menu, which is called, um, Toolkit, because anything that's for the client, the client thinks it's the only user. <laughs> if it's for the translator, I'll call it the translator's toolkit. But I'm not going to put client's toolkit. I just put toolkit, so that um, it'll only be seen by the client. Uh, Psychological trick. Exactly. So the toolkit. Um, Okay, 
um, a central place uh, to place all our common tasks. Okay, save that. So I'm going to add here, first of all, um, this thing, I'm going to take it off the, the, the primary menu. Um, view translations. Good. So the path is going to be uh, view translations, which is exactly what the path is in the view. Best and actually, I'm, I'm, I'm lazy. <coughs> I'm going to do to help me. I'm going to go here to Views. I'm going to go into Translations. I'm going to say, in this page, um, put it on. Go to a normal inventory in the toolkit. I already said what the title is. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, this is view uh, my translation. Oh, we'll just say my translation. Okay. And uh, we'll just update. Fine. Then, if we go to the finished translations, a normal entry. Um, we will say finished. Finished translations. Or completed translations. And we'll put this also into this nice toolkit thing. Wonderful. We'll save the view. And now we'll make a nice little block. We'll go into site building blocks and we'll say this view that came, where is it? Toolkit appears magically, as we know. Whenever we make a menu, automatically appears a block. So we'll put this on the left hand side. Oh my god. <laughs> where did that come from? Which we're using the, the great top notch theme, um, Aquia Marina. Right? And it has 20 million regions, <laughs> uh, some of which are not fit to apply company. So it just it just puts the you know. So if you don't mind, we'll just put it in sidebar. Okay. Uh, again, when you change that, it automatically sticks it up there. But it, until you actually click to save blocks, it won't happen. So if uh, we mosey on over, ah, we forgot to do something very important. See, this toolkit, we only want the clients to see. So we come in here, we say clients. Which is, as of Drupal 5, you could do that before you have to write PHP thing. And dev. No. So your developers, that doesn't have any transfer. Your developers don't want to see this block as they're working with it? Well, they can see the block, but they won't have any. OK. You're right. Dev. So they can see the block. The problem is, the, the block will be useless because we won't, we won't have any translation to click on. But, it, you know, it's cool. Um, actually, the dev will probably want to do what I'm doing now in, in one browser or, or, or profile and have the client logged in and see that and be developing. But you probably will. Then <coughs> give it to them as well. And, um, and uh, save the block. So now, Here's Jane. So Jane comes in um, and it says my translation. It doesn't say the other one. Okay. So I click on my translation. Um, oh, something wrong. <laughs> it's hierarchical to some reason. I guess. Let's just go to Mexico and tell it what to do. Um, toolkit, and look at that, it won't let me. Ooh. Ah, how interesting! 
Yeah, because it's, it's a display, so it doesn't limit it. It must be... Yeah. There. The view as soon as I was trying to drag, I was trying to drag this from here. You move it like that. You want to try and figure out why that's not? Oh, no, I was just going to say that the view, when you were creating those menu items, the view assumed that because the path was nested within oh. the primary pages, view slash whatever, that it was going to be a Excellent. menu item. So yeah, it just created it for you automatically. Can you guys see that? It's view translations, and this is view translations finished. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now Jane comes in, okay, my translations, cool, in Spanish, my Spanish translations, great. Now what's finished? It's got all of them, and they're not finished. Something is wrong. My translations, Completed translations and it's saying that they're all there. And, and we have something is seriously wrong here. Um, the status of all of this is in blank. Um, and it should not comply with the view. So if we go back to the view and see what's going on with the view. We edit the translations. We go to finish translations. Uh, you have an or there instead of an and, mm -hmm. so you're showing all the published. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. On the filters, you have an or right after that, and it should Good. be an and. Excellent. So, um, and we have this one of nothing. It was com completed. Is what we wanted. So, once again, Drupal is right, and we you. <laughs> so, uh, it was with all the, all the, you know, because we did it like three or four times, and I forgot to actually do what I, what I wanted to do, which is that is one of completed. It's still the fault. Thank you. No. Override it. No, I need to override it. Good. And now I have to update, right? Mm -hmm. Good. And now I have to say, always, it's so convenient. <laughs> I think I'm just going to do views on the flight programming with PHPs. <laughs> no, no. I didn't say that. <laughs> okay. So now, my translations, I probably have to clear the cache. No. Well, I'm happy, but Jane is not happy. Because none of her translations are done. Yes. As a client, I wouldn't be happy either because I would come back and say the page is broken. Uh, you would say the page is broken. And, and yeah, I click on complete translation, there's nothing there. Uh, okay. Now, we are using empty text. So we have to specify empty text. Um, so let's, let's specify for, not for default. For so finished translations, we're going to specify yeah. none for empty text. We're going to say, sorry. There you go. Uh, there are no completed translations to you at this time. Okay, so now when she clicks on completed translations, nothing happens. Yes. Okay, so yeah. let's say, yeah. uh, what's going on? Say. Thank you. That's what I say. You always think you say it. I always think I say it. What am I going to do when you're not here? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to call you. Why didn't I say it? Joel, what was it I didn't do? There we are. So here's the, my translation and complete translation. Just for the heck of it, let's, let's uh, log out and let's um, log in as the team leader. It works. Um, and let's 
let's get one of these things um, in the Spanish. It was in, in Spanish. One from La Opinion. Carpas. Here we are. Since the team leader can also translate, um, add a translation. And we'll just translate this real quick. Tense. Uh, the new uh, housing solution in the U.S. The new... Am I making jokes? I'm just translating you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. And uh, the translator, I'll just say team leader, just to show off. Oh, you? Okay, translate. Now, here's... Estado is completed. And uh, this is English? Okay. Um, I'm not going to translate this. I'm not going to right now. I'm not really interested in translation. So I'm going to save this. Give the client. Oh, I forgot to put the client in. The client will be done programmatically with a module, but I'm not, I haven't done that uh, here. Because the client field should have already been um, put in. Now, oh, there's also a trigger to send a mail to Jane, so to, to advise her. Good. So now I log out, and Jane wants to know if it's true. Jane logs in. Spanish. So, so basically, the, in the multilingual side, you have two nodes which are connected uh, in the following way. I put Jane here. Hmm. So what you're seeing is a workflow situation. Yeah, right? it's a workflow that we. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we have is that all completed? And if we go to English, it says. That is completed. So hopefully, uh, if we had gone to the English, uh, we would have, of course she's in Spanish. So now, uh, Jane Doe <laughs> should work now. Comes in and looks for a complete translation, and it's still not uh, shown. But it should show the English one too. It's both of them. So. Anyway, she is going to come in in Spanish because she wants to see what her Spanish translation is, what's happening with the Spanish translation. She goes into Spanish, she goes into completed, and okay, it's working. So, basically, that's what we did. Uh, I want to go on and show some other stuff. Now, when the user team leader logs in, she wants to see if there are any new applications. And 
again, with an RSS feed and what's going on with all the translations um, uh, of any user. Because the, the view that we made with applications has a filter on it because it's used so that the user who logs in can see what's going on. Um, but we want um, another view to play around with, um, which we call all translation, so so that the, um, the team leader who logs in. So let's let's log out here. Let's log in as team leader again. So let's be consistent and make a team leader toolkit and, and take away the navigation from the back. Um, um, just to be consistent, here we have view application, view all translations twice, uh, and view applications. Um, this is a test one. So, uh, there's actually two views that have the same label on them, which is wrong. We would have to take a look at that and see what's going on. Um, they're just two different views. Um, this one is the one that we want, which uh, this one here is view applications. Okay. And um, in this view, you can see. Uh, the, the application that different people have made to become members of the site. Um, what happens is if there's no one logged in, you can actually register as a client or register as a translator. And when you do that, a content type is created, which is an application, and then the team really comes in and um, allows people to become clients or allows people to become uh, uh, translators. Um, the view all translations, this one here, um, is, is the one we're talking about. Um, there's actually two of them. The reason there's two of them is because um, in the second one, it's a bit more complicated, as you can see. Uh, and I really need to change that so that we can get confused. So let's go. Again. And we have uh, a test translation relationship, which is something I wanted to show in a little bit. Um, and we had um, um, all translations. So all translations with view translations. Um, and um, this one here has the same menu label on it. So we want to change that. between the 
the node of the translation itself and the actual translator to get some of that information in. Um, and, and I wanted to do that to show you how to use uh, relation, relationship. So um, right now they're both confused here, and I'm just simply trying to figure out why. <laughs> but um, uh, let me go back here. This one here is test translation relationship, which uses a relationship, which I'll, I'll get into in a second. I would like to know why in the page view, in the menu system, oh, that's, no, this is the title. It should be, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's just go ahead to menu, as we did before, and it'll be easier to fix. This is in the navigation, which we assigned it to the navigation one. And actually, while we're at it, let's just, let's, uh, it's going to be a lot less confusing if we make a toolkit thing. Uh, let's go back. Let's make another menu just for the, the team leader to organize ourselves. So, team leader menu, team leader toolkit, team leader toolkit. Okay. Hyphens. Okay, good. Okay, so we now have the team leader toolkit menu. So now, um, um, what we need to do is to go to. What's the great Go to menus again. Now, this is interesting. If I go to navigation, right, and I'm looking for this, uh, which view? Uh, in navigation, it's in. Why is it still here? Okay, no. This one here, you check. Take that. It's not the same way. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yep. That's weird. Why is it still there? This is the cache, I think. Anyway. Um, this one, I entered it in the first one. Come back. <coughs> View application. <laughs> that. That is that. Let's see. This one. Stop moving. So I'm going to transfer this also into the token so that we can deal with it more easily. Now, we can now just put the team in the toolkit on. You want to 
place the block real quick. Um, no, first of all, I want to get rid of this problem here. I want to change the, the title. This one, I want to say Buell translations um, plus um, extra. I'm just going to put extra into it because it has some extra information to distinguish it from the other one. Now, so we have the two, so at least they're different now. So now, yes, I want to make the block. So we come here to blocks. We come here to the newly created team leader toolkit thing. Um, we put it into sidebar first. And we save the blocks, and then we configure it to only appear for team leader and dev. So now, the team leader, ah, you know what, we're also going to do the following. Navigation is going to take away from everybody except that Only that gets navigation. Um, then we can add log out if we want to, to the new toolkits and stuff like that, but for now, it doesn't matter. So, um, here, the team leader goes to the front page and now has, instead of the navigation menu, the village complexity just has his own little sign. And he's got two views. He's got one view, which is, it, it's basically, it just takes off the limitation of, um, the only difference between the other translation one is that this uh, shows all translations. It doesn't matter um, who, is the, who is the user, which client may be. And the other thing is it adds in the status and it shows the, the debut. Okay. And this other one here has the status and the debut, but it also has the translator's name and the language and all kinds of stuff. Um, which is interesting because if you think about it, um, if we look at the content types, let's, let's clear out this mess. Here, uh, if we look at um, the translation node, what information does it have? It has the client, it has a, a reference to the translator. So, uh, and it has all these other fields. It, it doesn't have the name of the translator, for example. Um, it, has, it has a user reference to the translator, it has the name, but it doesn't have other information proper to the, the translator type. So if you look at the content type of the translator, I'm sorry, the, the user. I'm thinking of the user as the user node. Oh, right. That's right. right. We're talking about the, the actual translator itself with all his, his data. That's right. So anyway, let's look. Um, uh, the reason I mention this is because if I make a view of the translation, the only information I can really show is, is this. Um, I can only show information of the node, the property of the node. And yet, the translation module, which is the I18M module, also has its own information and data, which is not part of this node, uh, actually speaking. In other words, if I, if I look here, if the, if the team leader clicks on translation one, he has a translate menu 
which shows if it shows the English and the Spanish. Now, where is this information? Where is this information? This information is not in the translation of Nolan. It's in the it's in the, the translation module persistent. Uh, in other words, there's one node, which is the Spanish one, one node, which is the English one, and then there's a, a sort of a container that knows that these two nodes are connected to each other. But the, the Spanish node on its own, the Spanish node on its own, does not have a link, a known reference to, to the English one. Okay, is that clear? Um, that's what I was trying to get at. Um, if, if, if we look here, this is the translation node. It has the title, the client, the translator, the status, the language it's in, the date due, the text, and the file attached. So if I do a view, I have no way of knowing anything about the other node. In the view I have, I only know about this node. Okay? Um, the other node, the Spanish node, uh, uh, does not either know anything about the English node. So somewhere is that information. So, um, if we now look at the view, let's look at the super duper test translation relationship. View. Here, we've added two relationships, which is the same thing as the old-fashioned, uh, if I'm doing a sequel, you know, I'm just going to say um, it's a kind of a join. I'm, I'm joining two tables together so that I can see all of the, um, oops, that uh, we're going to say, this is a node view. In this node, we want to list translation types. But we need to relate, we need a relationship between this translation node and the translation information from the translation module. So I come in here and basically I'm saying that uh, uh, that I want that actually you have to kind of see this um, let's go. Let's go to the one that doesn't have it and bring it in, and then not save it, so you can see this clearly. Um, let's list the views, and let's look at the um, the translations one, uh, or even the translations two that we were yeah. playing around with before. This is the list. There's no relationships defined here. If I if I click on relationships, it shows all the ones that are possible. I'm supposed to click here on the cluster. Oh, what happened? When did you jump back to your test relationship? Sorry. Okay, edit translation. Good. Now, I want to add a relationship. What kind of relationship do I want to add? A node translation relationship. And it will say I can add in the source translation, so that this node will, will know about the source translation. In other words, if this node is, a, is an English node, it will find out about the Spanish node. It will have information which node it is. So I'll be able to, to make a view which has a column that says what the other, the other node is, which is information which is not persisted in the individual node itself persisted in another table. So all I'm doing is I'm joining two tables. Somewhere in the database is a table that says node 49 and node 50 are twins. One's English and one's Spanish. Okay? And when I choose this relationship, I'm allowed to bring it in. Other relationships which exist, let's just cancel this a second. Um, if I add relationships, look at all the different relationships I have. Um, I can, I can link uh, a, a, a node to its comments. I can link um, 
the user will know revision. This is a great step forward here, because what happened? Um, Drupal has its own version control system that's built in, which is wonderful. Um, when you create a content type, you can say in the workflow that you would like revisions to be made. In other words, every time you save the node or every time you edit the node, um, in the database you have all the different <coughs> versions and you can actually go back. Does everybody know this? Who didn't know this before? Okay. But some, a lot of people don't know this. But Drupal, being sophisticated as it is, has all kinds of features like that. So you can actually um, look, if you go, uh, you can look at all the different versions that have ever been saved of a node. Now, it's feasible that different users have edited different versions of the same node. And up till now, it was impossible to make a view that took into account the, the information of the user who happened to edit the fifth version of the node. Because usually, um, uh, we only have the first version. Now, Earl Miles, in the help, the excellent help, advanced help thing I showed you in the beginning, um, explains that one of the biggest confusions that exist in the relationships question is that you already have some relationships without being told you do. For example, um, you are able to filter a node by the node author uh, so that, and, and you can actually put the name of the author in. So actually you have a relationship which is sort of built in. It's hard coded. It's not nice because it shouldn't be there. Um, it's there because it used to be there in views one. And Earl says in the help file, um, when I realized it shouldn't be there, because it should be explicitly done, <coughs> um, it was too late to take it out because there's 20 million sites that depend on that. You know? So he, he can't take it out. So it's a legacy distortion. So since we know that we have a, a, a relationship with the author of the node, the one who created the node, we're confused because it's like, uh, where did that come from? And, and, and how come I have to explicitly uh, ask for the other one then? Okay, so uh, this is explained. Go ahead and read in your own leisure time the help file and it will explain all of this. Um, in fact, it's all here if you click. It's, it's context sensitive. It's right here if you click on the little question mark next to relationships. Again, you must install the advanced help module for that. So, um, you can uh, as we were saying, you can say, bring me for each revision the, the user that edited each revision, which is a great step forward you know, in case you're, you're really interested in that kind of thing. What we're interested in is this, the source translation of the known translation. So if we, if we click here, that means that we can bring in information about the translation that wouldn't otherwise be in the known. Is that clear? Is that clear? So that um, if I add that, right, and I update, I, you, can, you can decide to require or not. If you require the relationship, only those nodes which satisfy that relationship and which have uh, that information will be, will be shown. Um, in this case, we won't require it. Um, so now what can I do? Now, in the field list, I can add um, I can put uh, the translation set node ID, which is the translation set is the set of all the nodes which are, are translations of each other. Okay, um, we see that. Remember, if we hit any translation type and we click on translate, we can see there's a translation set. It's composed of this one and there's no other translation. In other words, here it says add translation because this translation set is incomplete because it has 
the Spanish one, which is the source, and it doesn't have any English translation there. So um, the whole idea here is that um, by virtue of, I think I did it. You can see that only these two have said. So if I if I go to this English one and I hit the translate, this has a complete translation set. It has the English and the Spanish. And, when, and the purpose of this is to show you groups of notes which are translated. Um, then if there is a translation set, its ID will appear here. So we'll add this to the field. Okay. And there's all kinds of stuff we can do. We'll just say we can exclude it from the display and just have it there um, so that we can programmatically access it if we want to. We can um, rewrite the output. We can do all kinds of stuff. We can make a link out of it. Right now we won't do anything. Um, and, and basically, translation. Let's take away this one, this current user, so we can see the results. Remove that. Okay. So now it says translation, title, translation, translation set node 5. Um, <coughs> title, translation 1, translation set node 5. So if you, looking at that, obviously this would have to be shown in a different way, but uh, this one's 14. So you can see the ones which are actually translated. But all I want to show right now is that by virtue of having used the relationship, we were able to bring in information that we can show here, okay? Um, so that people can see information that's drawn from two sources. <coughs> hey, so this can, is, can I ask what the, um, when you went through and you, you added that field, there was the user, user relationship drop down and you didn't, the one here that I removed. Yeah, uh, I removed that because it was it was saying only show the current user. And since I'm dead, playing around, I don't have any translation. Sorry, so, no, no, no. When the the field, it's not the filters. When you were in um, field, it said um, uh, this one here. Yeah, there was um, a drop down. Do you not need to relate right at the top there? Very good. Do you not need to? Okay, what's going on? Um, if, Exactly. The using the relationship or not using the relationship means if we're going to be rigorous in the information, what's going to happen, if I put source translation, then it will not put anything, it, it doesn't put anything in right. there, it, it doesn't put zero, it doesn't right. put a default value, it's being stricter about right. the value. It's not just saying, okay, well, there's a column here, so I've got to do something to it. No, use the relationship to get the value. So, um, <clears throat> now here, the style, okay, anyway. So, I want to know if that's clear or not, if uh, that's the way you do the relationships. Um, again, the different kind of relationships you can add, for example, you can, you, there's an upload one, which will show the attached files of a node. Very good. So I can, you know, previously to this, files which were attached to nodes, you'd have to do some fancy PHP theming to, 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 to even access them. Because you'd have to get into the node, get the reference, go look, and then find it from the, from the file, from the database table. The file. Uh, but now, thanks to this um, relationship feature of use2, um, you can actually specify if you want, you want to show a column in the view result which has the um, attached file. So that's that's really something. Okay, just give me one moment. Sorry, everyone.